So we've got a bit of a problem to solve. Let's work on that today. this is your first time here, let me introduce myself. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. This guy in front of me is my, well, these parts in front of me. <laughs> That's Microflash Delta, my three pound combat robot. He's got nothing to do with this particular episode, just sitting right here, because upcoming episode, more robotic stuff. Hit subscribe if you like that kind of a thing. Combat robots are awesome. But today, if you have been watching for a while, you know that I've been getting more and more involved with woodworking, and I've got a project coming up that's involving these Nice pieces of wood here that have actually been sitting in the background for several months. Um, this is some oak over here, We've got some poplar on this side. And what I need to do is do a bit of creative joinery for this project. And I also need to involve everyone's favorite cut or edge joint, a waterfall edge, right? You get to get that continuous grain effect going over the side of the woodworking project. And given the nature of this said project, I basically got to ace that cut twice in a row. So what I'm going to do is practice all these techniques using some cheaper pine wood first. And here's what I want to do. So I want to do a fancy wavy joint, you know, where they kind of overlap the boards a little bit and you kind of cut a fancy little pattern in here and they kind of merge in that way. And then practice a couple of the waterfall edge cuts, maybe use some different tools, whatever it may be to figure out what way is it for me to get the most accurate cut. That's what I'm interested in at this point. Most accurate, precise cut without screwing up. So not necessarily the fastest, but the most accurate way of doing things. Now I've done some studying on this and I guess I'm reasonably well studied by 2020 standards, which means I watched a YouTube video. <laughs> Welcome to our culture in 2020. If you're, you know, if you've only kind of loose looks into something, that means you've read about a tweet or two, but you know, well studied is one full video on how to do this kind of a thing. So let's start with, first of all, the kind of wavy joinery cut. After some scribble math on a piece of scrap paper, I'm gonna go with a 0.75 inch overlap. So that's gonna be pretty simple to figure out. I mean, right now with these cheap pine boards, it may not be perfect, but it's just kind of the idea, right? I'm gonna make a few 0.75 inch marks along here. And then on this one, I'm gonna make the same marks as well, mainly because that way then I have an actual guide for the saw to know where I can't cross. If I cross that line, bad things will happen, right? So reverse process. 0.75 inches over here. So during this entire cutting process, what I'm gonna end up doing is having essentially this board sit on top of the other one like this, and obviously that's a bit unstable. So let me get another scrap one by four to put under here while I get things all assembled. So the next thing to think about is I'm cutting this fancy joinery out. I don't want these boards to move relative to each other. The assumption needs to be made that whatever this cut is going to be, I've got probably at least a few inches of extra material on either end, and I'm going to drive in two screws, like two there and two up there. That way, as this cut is being done, there's always going to be two screws holding the boards together, and that'll reduce the chances that they kind of rotate out of place. If there's only one screw on either end, you could get a situation where the board is going to rotate around just that one screw. And I mean, if you got the extra distance, put a third one in there. <laughs> now I need to define where the start and stop pieces are going to be, basically the ends of the final cut. Let's go right there. And then right there. So the idea is I'm gonna come in with a saw blade around here like this. We'll dive in somewhere around here and just very roughly, I am going to trace out approximately my fancy curve. It's gonna be very, very shallow because it's a bandsaw. And of course, I'm <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I know this is a cheap band saw and I'm pushing it to the limits, but I think it'll be all right. <laughs> Someone out there is probably wanting to point that out. Yes, I know this thing's a piece of, well, it's actually not a bad little tool. It's not great, but you know. The 
two pieces of wood fit together pretty darn close. So let's glue them up and let that dry for a little while. So I'm in a little bit of a hurry, so I'm gonna cheat just a bit here. I do wanna make sure I have better registration marks between the two pieces. <laughs> make a note for that for the future. Being such a small glue up, I'm just gonna use normal clamps. I don't feel like dragging out my monster parallel clamps for this, but for the actual project, Yes, I'm gonna have to use real parallel clamps for this glue-up process. Whoops, that's a thing of paintbrushes just fell back there. But while that's drying, let's talk a little bit about doing the actual live, not live edge, wrong type of woodworking. Waterfall edge, did I call it live edge earlier? I might have. I don't know, waterfall edge cut. Now, of course, there's several ways you can do this. Um, I could use my miter saw. I could actually use the miter saw. The final board is gonna be right around the maximum size of my miter saw. I have, you know, I have a sliding miter saw. I think that might be an option. But for this small test piece here, let's first try out using just a circular saw. First up is a basic cross cut. We're just gonna cut the piece into two parts. And then we'll worry about the 45 degree joint in a bit. And what I wanna make sure I do, you can kind of see the grain pretty well here. I'm gonna add some accentuations to the grain, i.e. some pencil marks. The waterfall edge involves two 45 degree angles meeting up perfectly. You can adjust the base here to get you know a 45 degree cut, but that doesn't mean that they're actually precisely 45. You have to calibrate your saw first. And the way you don't do that is using a speed square. These things, though they're good for 90 degree angles, there's no guarantee that this angle here is a 45 degree. What is a 45 degree are drafter squares, because these things, for reasons of drafting, need to be exactly 45 degrees. This is your tool you want to use for calibrating your circular saw for this process. In fact, if I actually put the drafter square over the speed square, you can tell the speed square is off by a tiny bit. In this case, maybe about a degree or two, but that's enough to cause issues if you're going for a super precise cut. That fits in there quite snugly. So I think that's actually pretty close to a 45 degree angle right now. This is the saw right out of the box, which is good. I think it'll be all right. So what I essentially need to do is make a 45 degree cut like that, and then a 45 degree cut right there, which will then allow them to overlap in a way that this edge lines up with that edge which is what you call that waterfall of thing, the jig that I was talking about. <laughs> I, know, I know my terminology, right? So I was running into a little bit of resistance there with the cut. I think the issue was I had the depth too far down in the saw blade. Once again, learn some basic things. Let's finish this cut off. So there's a few minor hiccups there, but well, that's why we're doing this whole process to figure out these things and see where those hiccups are. But I've got two pieces with look to have nice clean 45 degree miters to them. Let's see if they meet up pretty well. Yeah, they look really nice. Let's glue them up and just make sure that things look as well as I think they do. Ow, there goes a freaking another sliver. 
So here's the last piece of the assembly process that I really need to figure out, and that's this Rockler clamp system for 90 degree angles that I bought back in January and haven't taken out of the package yet. <laughs> I assume it's fairly easy to use, but once again, let's try it out on the cheap stuff before I screw up the expensive stuff. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> How does this one come out? Now this is a little bit trickier. It's got some of these little tie things and apparently two bolts. The problem is there's machine screws and then there's bolts and then there's normal screws and machine screws and bolts are kind of the same thing, but I think they have different heads. Maybe a tiny bit too big for the piece I'm working on here. Oh, it might just work. Might. Keyword is might just work. Okay. It's 90 degrees on the inside, but hey. You know, I'll stop messing with it. It's pretty darn good. I think it'll be good enough for the secret project I'm working on with the oak board and the poplar board right here. And in fact, I got two more of them sitting over there and some other stuff. There is one piece I do have to track down given the circumstances right now. I figured I'd walk to the local store and buy it. And that's not possible right now in Michigan. <laughs> so whenever I can get that piece ordered and have it show up, we'll jump over to working on this fun secret woodworking project here in a few weeks. But in the meantime, got some more micro flash coming up. He's in a bunch of pieces right now because I'm breaking him down, making the final copies of all his parts. I'm going to reassemble them, give him his paint job, you know, do that whole array for battle treatment like I did with micro flash gamma. And with the same thing here and call this build done here in a little bit. I'm still thinking I'll go back to some Age of Sigmar. I got two more miniatures on my war band to paint up at the time I'm recording this. And I've been working on some 3D printed terrain, but that's probably not till closer to the summer to coincide with a certain new major game release that I may have got the $70 starter set for on Kickstarter details. <laughs> you probably know what that one is if you're a tabletop miniatures war gamer. Um, I'm actually really excited about the game. It wasn't, you know. Anyway, regardless, I'm rambling as I frequently do. Do. So I think that's all the shameless self-promotion I got at this time. So once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. Thank you guys all for watching this little fun little wood experiment. Hopefully it just gives you an idea of, well, if you got something more complex to try, you can work it out and just, yeah, I don't know. You might figure out all the little things in the process, solve all the stupid crap. That sounds familiar for watching the micro flash things. And therefore, when you go to the real stuff, it'll turn out pretty good. So for like, Second time in about a minute. Thanks for watching and have a great week.